to A Taste of the Beach, everybody. I'm Dan Lipton, publisher of Travel Host Beach Cities Magazine, and your host for this weekly program that showcases the best places to dine, shop, and play, and, and to connect the traveler to uh, fun and enjoyable locations so they too can enjoy a taste of the beach. Proud to say that I'm a, a struggling home brewer, but I, I love it. And now to be able to find a place that I can uh, uh, bring my interest to without um, messing up my kitchen and, and be able to make more beer than I was, was ever possibly ever to make before. I'm very, very excited. And we're at that place, and that's Duchess Brew House here in the Bixby Knoll section of Long Beach and um, with the owner, uh, Jason Van Fleet. And thank you for uh, making the time for us today. And My pleasure. Looking forward to actually going through the process today. And uh, let's just start off a little bit by getting to know a little bit about you, Jason. So um, I ask a very general question, which is tell me a little bit about yourself, and I'll let you fill in the blanks. Well, uh, Jason Van Fleet. Uh, owner of Dutch's Brew House, co-owner. My wife is the other owner, of course, because every leave her out. you know can't can't leave the the big boss out. But uh, yeah, basically, I don't know. Five years ago, I had this wild hair in my butt to open up a bar brewery kind of situation, something I could uh, get out of photography. I was a freelance photographer for 25 years, uh, dabbled in the film business as well. And I just kind of decided that I wanted to do something closer to home, not get in the car too much, and uh, maybe have a little bit of an easier job. So literally five years ago, I'd been making beer at a very similar place to Dutch's Brew House called uh, Brew Bakers in Huntington Beach, which no longer exists, unfortunately. And uh, for years and years and years, I thought that would be kind of a fun business to have, but wasn't 100% sure that it would make sense. So. One day, we, where we were actually using him for several uh, fundraisers that we were doing for our kids' school. And so I'd go get the <clears throat> beer from him, and I'd basically sell it to people at this festival we'd have. And sell it to children? Sell it to children, because, you know, kids need a drink. No, it was a Catholic school, so of course the, the parents drank, and that's the big fundraiser, right? So, so I did, for that, did that literally two years, and I kept asking the people that kept coming up. I said, hey, what do you think of this concept where you a place you can make your own beer, you could drink beer, eat some pizzas and just kind of have a casual neighborhood environment. And uh, they really seemed to like it. And so on the last time I went back to return all the equipment to them, I said, hey, what do you think about me opening one of these in Long Beach? He goes, yeah, go for it. I said, okay. So with a handshake deal with a lot of money spent through that handshake, I went back and I asked my wife and I said, hey, what do you think about opening up a, you know, a brew bakers type thing or a little brew pub? And she said, go for it. She was supposed to be the sounding board to say, no, you idiot. Yeah, right. <laughs> so anyways, fast forward five years later, here we are. Uh, we're two and a half years into it. And uh, what we've done here is we actually allow you, the customer, to come in and make your own home, home craft beer at a 15-gallon rate versus the five-gallon that you would do at home. Exactly. Uh, cut your costs down a little bit. You make the mess. We clean up the, we clean it up. And um, that's kind of sure. kind of it. And I, th I think, you know, speaking personally about the batch that I made last year is with your, with your background and, and your help, I, I think we're able to make a better product. And I, I think that's, um, I think what everybody's hoping for who comes in, you know, to work with you. Uh, Duchess Brew House? Oh, the name, the name? yes. Uh, well, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. So my last name is Van Fleet. So my nickname was the Dutch for a lot of years. And so... When we were sitting around probably about seven years ago outside of our tiki bar in our backyard, it was about the first time you were able to start checking into to Facebook. And uh, you had to, have, had to be a business or some kind of an organization. I can't remember exactly what the parameters were. And we were joking around and uh, said, only oh, if we could check in at this place, you know, our, our tiki bar, our backyard tiki bar. And so one of my friends suggested, because I was going through the process on how to how to get it involved and get, get to the point where we could actually check in and therefore we had to have a name. And so he said, uh, well, you got to call it Dutch's Tiki Bar. I said, all right, fine. So sure enough, it became Dutch's Tiki Bar and every weekend we'd check in and people would say, well, where the hell's Dutch's Tiki Bar? This is a great place. We want to come. And the joke was it was in my backyard. 
So then fast forward, we've rented a, the same cabin from family friends for the last 10 years. And so we started checking into there as Dutch's Mountain Hideaway. So now fast forward and my wife goes, duh, you got to call it Dutch's Brew House. I'm like, oh, so okay. here we are today. Okay. And besides being close to home, was there any other particular reason why you selected oh, yeah. Bixby Knowles as where you wanted to be? Well, Long Beach in general is one of those weird places. I, you know, I'm born and raised in Texas, and it's definitely a state that's very proud of itself. And the people have a lot of uh, home pride, if you will. I would put Long Beach as a city with more pride than most Texans do. And I think Bixby Knowles in particular has even more of a, a step up to that because everybody's very about local um, and just really, you know, it's like one of those things, if you build it, they will come and they will support the hell out of you because uh, I am surviving today because of 98% of my, my base is regulars. Sure. And it was very important for me to try to build a place that that I can support the, the, the neighborhood and they can support me and lo and behold it actually happens. So. Great. So I think what we're going to do is go over and you know and start making beer. Sure. Um, I think we've selected a Saison. Yes. Um, could you give a brief um, definition for those sure. who are not familiar with Saison, what that is? Saison's traditionally a pale ale that's highly carbonated, low alcohol, and dry. When I say dry, it means not terribly sweet. Uh, a lot of characteristics, uh, you have spice and fruity notes and flavors to it. Um, however, today, this day and age, it's not, not uncommon to have a higher alcohol content than the, the traditional content, or the uh, traditional saisons. So we're gonna, we're gonna move over to the area where we actually make this stuff. This is a group effort. Whoever is here that wants to actually participate in the process, this is going to be a great time to do that. And we're going to define all of these terms for you, like wart, and uh, not, not this kind of wart, but uh, <laughs> W-O-R-T and what it means. And Work. we're going to get cooking and uh, make some beer today. So hang in there, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> Come back right. to A Taste of the Beach. Everybody, we're here at Duchess Brew House at 4244 Atlantic Avenue in Bixby Knowles, section of Long Beach. And we're making beer today. We're making actually a Saison. I am with the uh, chief bootlegger, otherwise known as the brewmaster, Adam Escobar. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Good to meet you as well. Thank you for your help today. No problem. Uh, this is a, uh, a cheat sheet, not for me, but perhaps for, uh, well actually, probably is for me. Yeah, so. Uh, so that we make sure that we put the right ingredients in for our Saison. We know Saison is a, a Belgian style, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And uh, please explain for our audience, what's the first thing we need to do when we make beer? Sure, so to get started, we always have anyone who's coming in, start off with the recipe, and then from there, we have them gather the ingredients, and then we make sure we have those ingredients uh, beforehand, before selecting the recipe and so on. So to get started, we will start to gather the ingredients. And the first one on the list is Pilsner malt. So three pounds of Pilsner malt. Three pounds of Pilsner malt. So you'll malt. turn on the scale here. Okay. Right. So we got a scale. Yep. Make sure it's teared to zero. Okay. Pilsner. So can we hold up that bag and show yep. people what we have here? So we have Pilsner here. Uh, can you get that at uh, Trader Joe's? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now you gotta order it online. Gotta order online. We okay. also have them in buckets, but Pilsen we just don't have a bucket for, so here you go. Yep. Start scooping. In here. Yep. So you All just right. wanna keep an eye on there. Just right, to make so sure you get up to three. One point six six. I always kinda of sprinkle it the closer we yes, get. Yes, right. Smart. That's perfect right there. Okay. Perfect. All right, so to go again, you just hit tear, just to tear it off to zero. And then we'll check next on our list is, uh, we could go in any order. So we'll do 2.9 pounds of the Munich 10, which is right in front of us here. Okay. There I think go. I need uh, Jessica's help. Come on, Jessica. All right. All right. Okay. This is the lovely Jessica from Harvell's. Hi. Long Beach's own, only burlesque nightclub. Yes. I, and uh, so right, what, what are we doing? How many? Uh, 2.9 pounds of 2.9 pounds of that into, all right. 
Yep. Excellent. Yep. So here's Thank the you. lid to put back. So what was that that we just added to Munich the... 10. Say that again? Munich 10. Munich 10. Yes. And that is a grain. Yep. Okay, obviously from Germany? Uh, no? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that one's uh, okay. from Germany. So just out of curiosity, it looks like we're going to put together, and this is to make how much beer? Uh, this is for roughly 15 gallons. 15 72 gallons. 72, 22 ounce bottles. Okay. So uh, how, do you, how, do, how do we come up with this combination of grains to make this? Sure. So a lot of the recipes come from our own recipes we've already made in the past and tweaked. And then we, also, then we put it through a program called Beersmith to convert it to uh, a partial mash brew. Okay. Uh, partial mash is when you steep some grains for roughly 30, 40 minutes, and then you add malt extract to kind of speed up the process, but to add the rest of your base sugar. Okay. Um, sugar is fermented to make alcohol, so we need that in there to give the foundation of the beer. So now we need rye, yep. right? Yeah, we can do care pills first, just because it's right here. Oh, okay. The rye and the white wheat what, will so be which in the back did, of the room. Which one did we just add? The we Munich just did 10. Munich 10. Got it. So the rye and the white wheat will be at the back of the room. And okay. then from there, we'll gather it. All right. So you could um, just grab the scooper, scoop yeah. from there. Carapils, what, is, what, is, what, what does carapils mean? Carapils adds body to the beer and increases the head retention. So when you pour a beer, uh, that foam that stays on the glass creates the lace around your glass as well. That's what this ingredient's for. So then we'll take this to the back of the room to gather our, the rest of our ingredients. Okay. It's just two ingredients, 2.9 pounds of each. Okay. All right. Should I take the bucket? Yep. There you go. Thank you. I'm here, Duchess Brew House with Adam Escobar, brewmaster extraordinaire. <laughs> Enjoying a great hot dog here on Wiener Wednesday. A little beverage. And Adam, if you don't mind, what I'd like you to do is explain to our audience where we are in the process, mm -hmm. what we're going to do next, and then describe just what happens after right. that. All right, so we already steeped our grains for about 30 minutes. So what you'll have me do right now is just help me pull this out. Sure. So we'll slowly let it drain. We'll rest the back right there. There we go. We'll just let that rest. Okay. We'll turn on the steam to get it to a boil. because. Once we get it to a boil, we'll uh, gather our hops, we'll gather the malt extract to give the rest of the sugar in there, and then from there we boil for 60 minutes. And then that's where we add just a different schedule of hops, a 60 minute hop, the 10 minute hop, and the five minute hop. So the later hops will give us more aromatics and flavor. 60 minutes just gives us the, bittering, the bitterness. Uh, we'll do the 60 minute boil. After that, we'll let it kind of rest for about 20 minutes. And in that meantime, I have the fermenter right here, and I'll bring it around to show them later. Okay. But uh, once we let it rest for 20 minutes, I'll transfer it into this fermenter we'll, where we add the yeast and let it rest for about two weeks. And that's when the yeast eats up all the sugar and, and creates it becomes your alcohol. alcohol right. Yes, so byproducts are alcohol and CO2, right. which is why we have this blow off cane to let all the CO2 get, it, get out, but nothing will go back in. Okay. Because the beer is sensitive at that point. We don't want it to get infected or anything like that. Uh, after, yeah. So after that two week period. Yes. You that, come so after the two weeks we then let it rest for a couple days and then from there we will uh, bottle, right? We'll we'll put it into a keg for you where we'll carbonate yes. and then once you come back you bottle so that's right. roughly so the difference three weeks. between what you do and what a home brewer on their own might do is um, there's no, like you pre-carbonate, yes. where when I used to make yep. it, it you carbonated carb in the bottle. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is a faster process. It is. Because once it's bottled, it's really ready. Mm -hmm. Correct? It doesn't have to sit. Nope. Like for a month, like I used to do. Correct? Right. Right. Okay. So when you let it naturally carbonate, it always takes time, and then right. you have to almost keep waiting until it gets to the right carbonation. So another reason we to, could dial it in. Yeah. So another reason to bring it here to yeah. do it is it speeds up the process. Right. Yeah. Usually, I'll email you. Uh, we'll schedule an appointment so that you can come in and put on the label you designed and bottle your beer. Wonderful. All right. Awesome. And I can even have you start gathering some of those uh, hops while I get rid of that basket. Great. All right. We'll, so I'll have you do we'll, that real quick. We'll, we'll do that. 
again, I just want to thank everybody for watching. Appreciate your description of what we're going to do. And uh, Dutch's Brew House, the place to come to make beer and drink beer and eat. <laughs> Welcome back to A Taste of the Beach, everybody. You know, we've been brewing beer. It's in the process. We're probably in our first 45 minutes or so. of We have, we have the, the milled grains uh, cooking in the pots over here for another 15, 20 minutes. And we probably still have another couple hours, if not more, to go. Uh, one of the great things about Dutch's Brew House is that it's not just a place to make beer, but it's a place to drink beer and eat good food. So what we have in front of us are some pizzas, and, um, and they have some other things on the menu. Jason, why don't you just talk about the menu a little bit? So basically at Dutch's Brew House, we started off, the idea was pizza and beer. You can't go wrong. And... Uh, Frank Deloche is our chef here at Dutch's Brew House, and uh, he's created some classic styles, some little bit kind of the Italian. We got the basic here, which is your typical, you know, basil and cheese pizza, right. with like a margarita, like a margarita, exactly pizza. like a margarita. His yeah. take on it, and then we have the pervy pep, we call it, and that's just a pepperoni pizza with a ton of pepperoni. Right, and this These, one's made to order for my friends who like a little sausage, so. You know, whatever you like on a pizza, basically, yep. right? Yeah, but basically we do all craft pizzas. We got uh, Speck and the Dutch is another one you ordered. It's not up yet. Yeah. And that's uh, Speck with uh, arugula, lemon, and uh, aged, uh, uh, can't remember the name of the cheese, but it's a very smoky Pecorino? Flip. Pecorino yeah. is the cheese. That's really good. And uh, Big Daddy we got, that's a meatball pizza. We got a cheeseburger pizza called uh, Burgerza. And that tastes like an In-N-Out hamburger, basically on a pizza. Nice. Uh, the guy is a mad genius, and so food has taken off here, Duchess. So we we now introduced Wiener Wednesdays, and we got a couple of hot dogs coming out for you, gourmet-style hot dogs. Yeah. And uh, it's it's all good. Uh, you also have a, a, some non-pizza items. We do. We also do sandwiches, uh, salads. <laughs> And then uh, we're, we're kind of well known for our Frito pie, and it's a, it's a Texas-style chili. We cut open a bag of Fritos and just dump chili on there, cheese, onions, I, and sour cream, and some jalapenos. It's like so basic, but so good. So good. Right? It's actually a recipe that started at the Texas State Fair Is that many, right? many years ago. So. Um, how can people keep up with what's going on at Dutchess Brew House? Follow us on either Instagram, Facebook, or our website, www.dutchessbrewhouse.com. And uh, we pretty much keep everybody up to, to speed on that. And your hours of operation? 4 to 10, uh, Monday through Thursday, and 11 to 10, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Awesome. So I, I just want to close by saying this is the place to come for to make beer, to drink beer, to dine with friends in a very casual place here in Bixby Knolls, uh, the, a great little neighborhood in, in Long Beach that is more and more being discovered, and uh, just another great local place to do, uh, to do business and have fun and come and have a great time and uh, experience a little taste of the beach. Thanks for, for watching, everybody. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> there we go.